is the broken communication that we currently have. The reason how, why all these postings have gone on online, which has really detracted us, you, everybody, from our main goal. And that is to give you timely information from our organization to make sure that you're armed with it and you can act appropriately. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, on two separate occasions, I've taken an oath of office. And that is to protect and serve the Constitution of the United States from foreign and domestic. When I served in the United States Marine Corps and the LIPD, and that's what I'm here to do. I know that there are some folks that says, well, why can't you do that? There's the Constitution that I have to abide by. And other folks will say, well, why don't you do that? Because I have the Constitution in mind as well, so I have to respect everyone's rights. Everyone's rights. That's what I swore to do, and that's what I'm going to do until the day that I retire. So today, I have my partner, Alan Hamilton. He helps me with the Bureau. We have Captain McNeil Gardner. My apologies, I almost said Duncan. That's what we know him as. McNeil Gardner. He is coming to help us out. As you all know, Captain Ryan is out on some medical ill, uh, Ali, and she's going to be out for a while. So I thought that it was unfair for us to leave Captain Al Mendoza here running this very vital command on his own. So I brought the next senior, Captain One, who's very talented and very gifted, to help us run Topanga, especially as we navigate through this little rocky period that we have here right now. Uh, and obviously, as you guys know, we have the captain Paul Weber from Devonshire, we have uh, Steve Ambrick from West Valley, um, all the great slows that you all know and love, and a whole bunch of folks. So first of all, okay, so as you all know, how many of you, here, uh, you guys here are members of the uh, Crime Busters page, World of Hill? Okay, thank you. How many of you are members of the Crime Busters page of Westfield? Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, okay, so you're all members of that. So I don't have to tell you what has been going on in those pages. And the discussions that have been going back and forth and the the uh, the narrative that has been told in those pages. And I gotta tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely disappointed and saddened that such a critical tool in today's times, where it is a vital piece of information for my souls, for those folks to communicate with you, to give you that timely information, for me to see comments in there, no matter how they come up. And the comment is not the problem. The problem is all the banter that goes on after and all the discussion that goes on after. When I see a comment such as, let me put rat poison in a soup and give it out to individuals. That's problematic for me. <coughs> and again, it's not the comment, but all the different commentary that goes on after that. I have problems with that. When I see a comment similar to the fact of, you know, when do we start shooting? In today's age, it's extremely problematic. Because if I get one of those comments out of school, guess what's going to happen? We're going to shut it down, and we're going to take it extremely seriously. So when I see those comments, those are the kind of commentaries that cause me great concern. And i got to tell you, I don't sleep at night. I don't sleep at night, because I get woken up at 2 o'clock in the morning. If that incident happens, if we happen to lose a life, I get notified. Sometimes I have to come in. So those are very troublesome. When I hear the words, I hate her, and, and, and the words are in, in caps with exclamation points, that is troubling and concerning. And those are the type of commentaries that I've seen, the type of dialogue that's gone after, that have been very concerning to me, and that's why I made the conscious decision that I need to disassociate myself, my souls, our organization, from those type of organizations and comments. Now you may say it's very unfair that you're punishing all of us for the actions of one. Yes. Yeah. I understand that. And I completely sympathize with that. But in my 32 years in this career, I've also been punished many times for the actions of one. Not by the department, but by the community. Let me take you back to a little bit of lane. You guys remember an officer who was crooked? Rafael Perez. All our cops were crooks, all our cops were bad, all our cops were horrible. And that was probably the truth, and I think you guys all know that. 
So mm -hmm. we as an organization pay for the actions of one. And it's very unfortunate that it happens, but mm -hmm. that is reality. So today what I'm here to do is talk about that. Let's take a moment to reset, to think about everything that's been going on in this page and pages. There's a second page, I believe is neighbor, uh, the comments, homeless, and all that other stuff. Extremely inappropriate comments that are being said, say, uh, said on that comment as well. We as an organization, ladies and gentlemen, we do not condone any type of behavior that solicits violence, that supports violence, or any of those comments that were said in there. As I said, I did swore on two separate occasions to protect and uphold the Constitution of the United States. I can't have that. So, there'll be a moment for some questions. I'll open it up. We'll do that. Not yet. I'm finished. So what I'd like to do now, before we get into questions, I know there's going to be a lot of questions out here. Listen, I'm here to stay as long as you. I'm not going to cut you off and say, no, I'm going to be out of here at 5 o'clock, so last question, I'm gone. As long as you have a question, I'll be here to answer your questions. So be patient. Of all things that I ask is be respectful. If someone asks a question that you don't happen to agree with, please keep it to yourself. There's a lot of politicals that if I ask them, what are you going to vote for? I don't want to get a hundred things <laughs> wrong. You know, two things I was, I was taught at a young age and never discussed is what two things? Religion and politics. Religion and politics, right. Because we all know how passionate we are about those two topics. And no matter what you say, no matter what I say, I'm never going to convince you if you think different than me. That's what we have to respect. That's why we're all different. And that's the beauty of this country. All the diversity that we have, all the great ideas that we can share with one another, and collectively we can come up with a common goal, and that is to better our community. So what I'll do for right now is I want to turn it over to uh, Captain Gardner. He's got a couple of things that I want him to cover. And then I'm going to come back and we'll start with a question and answer. Okay? I know there's going to be a lot of questions, so I'm going to be going around and Please, I will get to you, to each and every single one of you. By the way, I know we have several cameras in this room. We are live streaming this meeting here for, on Facebook. For those of you that who could not make it, for whatever reason, child bear, or child bear. Child bear. Men and women are committed to your communities. 
many of them events at some exceptions. And many of them came here from West Valley when this Topanga was created and still service the same communities, regardless of whether it's West Valley or Topanga. They still have that commitment and dedication to you. We recognize that and we in no way want to minimize that or adversely impact that in any way. The other consideration, a lot of things that are posted on the web page talk about, well, we shouldn't let the comments of one impact our ability to have a slow on our page if we want to stay on. Um, in law enforcement, we are the most visible representation in government. And there are protections which Chief Rodriguez swore to uphold, as did I, did everyone here in a uniform. We swore to uphold the Constitution. And there is a protection for people to have an opportunity to redress government. And we cannot in any way either appear or in any way, any fashion, appear that we're censoring or redacting public commentary that's addressed to the government, us, LAPD, or the city, that, that would be an unconstitutional act. The only way that we can have an appearance to have some control is to provide a mechanism by which the LAPD is fully responsible for comments that occur. That's why those private closed accounts, we had our personnel divest themselves from those. It's for your protection, it's for our protection, it's for our men and women's protection, so they continue to provide the service you want. Um, who's running the PowerPoint? Can you touch? You all had an opportunity to grab some handouts. We provided you the slow basic car maps for both Topanga and West Valley. We provided you the email and the slow Facebook and the cell phone numbers. And on the second page, we provided you all the contact information for Topanga or West Valley. If you live in another command in the city of Los Angeles, that information exists for you too. Is it different than what we're used to? Is it different from the mechanisms of the, the platforms that you've recently used to great effect? Yes. But until we're able to resolve and come up with this rapidly changing horizon, it's a new horizon of social media, public communications, it's a challenge for all of us. We need to be able to ensure your rights are protected, our folks' rights are protected, and we continue to work in partnership towards the two major goals of this department. And you guys all know what these are. Reducing crime and building public trust. And if there's anything we're doing that isn't achieving those two goals, reducing crime, building public trust together, then that's wasted energy and it's a distraction. And that's why we're here tonight. I'm going to ask, as Chief Rodriguez asked, that we hit the reset button. Tonight, Topanga, and those from the communities around Topanga tonight be the model to reset civility in this community. Again, I was here with this community when this station opened. I grew up in Canoga Park. I lived in 7024 Jordan Avenue, and I went to school right down here on Coldwater Canyon. Or I'm sorry, Topanga Canyon at the elementary school, third, fourth, and fifth grade. I walked to school. I know what the community is like. My grandparents live here. On both sides, my mom and dad, they came here in the 40s. So I know what this valley is like. I know the commitment, the, the passion that all of you have for your community. We want to join in that. And by the way, we cannot, the Los Angeles Police Department cannot provide fully adequate police services without more help in this community. Chief Rodriguez is going to talk about avenues and opportunities for all of us to come together and continue the public police partnership in order to address our community needs. The bottom line is, unless we come together, it's wasted noise and wasted effort. Okay? This morning I checked our Topanga, basically we have a Topanga, as this is being broadcast on a Topanga Facebook account, where this is being live streamed now. And we try our best to put out information and messaging to help you better address your crime issues, be aware of upcoming events, to be prepared for those things, to get information back to us. And as of this morning when I came in at 5.30, the, the advertisement that we did for this event tonight had 119 posts in response to that. And as I read through those, they very quickly, very quickly, by just a handful of people, had nothing to do with crime and went into bickering and arguing and adversarial relationships. They had nothing to do with increasing the quality of life in this community, but more chipping at each other. And as Chief Rodriguez said, who knows, he was a captain here, we are better than that. I know you are, you care, these men and women here, the slowest for these communities, they are better than that, and we all need to get back together commit towards following uh, what we need to do to make this a better community. And by the way, this isn't just a community of, this is a community in this room. We have a community in Canoga Park, and it's a paying division. And in this valley, Chief said, you can tell what's important to somebody from where their feet are. Well, clearly, clearly, a deputy chief of the Los Angeles Police Department that covers over 2 million people in 53% of the landmass of the city of Los Angeles, 
finds it important to address you, to address us, because we need to move forward. Okay, we need to move forward. I'm not going to elaborate. I think that's where we're going to go, but that's what tonight is about. Let's just come together. She that to you. So, as, as we before we open it up for question and answer, uh, I'll, I'll ask you that this will be the end of this era. So if you continue to email me, if you continue to, as it relates to this year, folks, I gotta move on. I gotta lose our, our, our chief, not Michael, our chief Moore, he's got a city to run, we got other responsibilities to take care of. So that's why I wanted to come here, talk to you, see, see you, hear you, you can see me. I'm not behind the keyboard, the liquid, cur the liquid courage answers me. I'm very to this back and back and forth. Okay? So I want you to do this face to face, and that's why this was important today. So, with all that being said, uh, again, I know there's going to be a lot of passion. I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm following the challenge. I got some gray hairs. This technology. I'll be the first one to admit it's not my expertise. I know it's going to change even more. It's, we're going to find other challenges. This is not going to be the last one. But I sure hope that we can, we can come together in a setting like this and we can talk about it and we can find ways where we can use this emerging technology, this emerging system, and that's going to give us the ability to work together, work in partnership. Now, uh, he wanted to say Duncan. Captain Gardner yeah, alluded to it. McNeil Duncan Gardner, one okay. of my parents. <laughs> As Captain Duncan alluded, and I'm going to tell you, and I told you before, I've got 32 years to know the organization. And boy, have we gotten it wrong at times. But there's been a lot of times we've gotten it right. And we're not going to get it right every single time. If I take my uniform off, I'm human just like you are. I bleed just like you do. I have emotions just like you do. I say all that to say this. I'm not perfect, and neither is this organization. But by God, we sure are going to try. And that's what separates us from everybody else, is that we do have an opportunity to look internally, to look at ourselves, and say, what can we do better? And that's kind of what we're here to do tonight. What can we do better? How can we stop? How can we get rid of all this negativity and all these comments like I heard earlier, and focus on what's important, and that is making our community safer. Getting back to the collaboration. Listen, I need volunteers. How many of you currently volunteer at the station? I should get a room full of people. I need every single one of you. Hint, hint. I have, I have applications here. I do, I'm asking. Right here. Right here. Right. I, I got your QR code right here if anyone wants to volunteer to see me before you leave. I've got Are they available online? I've got about two thousand officers in the valley. How many eyes and ears is that? About four thousand, right? My LA is doing that too. Yes. Okay. We've got a population coming up on two million people. What right about two hundred and some square miles? We can't do it alone as an organization. I need your help. I need you. I need your involvement more than what you're doing now. I need volunteers. I've got a huge mall out here, which is the biggest one west of the Mississippi, and I've got a shopping season coming up. I need volunteers to be out in the parking lots working on my cops, letting us know when cars are getting broken into. I need folks to be out there visible, helping us with the traffic when there's a collision. As we know, we have a little bit of a traffic problem in the valley. So I need you. I can't have you against us. I need you working with us as an organization. So if you're not a volunteer now, uh, I've got the two captains. My partner has it. I'm sure I'm going to slow to come see you. Please sign up because I need you and I need you desperately. Number one. Number two, how many of you have been through the police academy, the citizen police academy that we put together? Again, I should have a handful of people. And for those of you that are watching on Facebook, you should sign up. We have one coming up on the 18th of, October, of September. And we do these all the time. Sometimes. Right? Sometimes. That's why I was here. I want to teach you what we do, how we do it, 
and why we do it. So that when you see things out there, whether it's in the news or somebody tells you, no matter what it is, at least you've got some sort of a background knowledge of what it is that we have. And it's not that I'm trained person that has no, no knowledge or no clue as to what's going on. We have those periodically. We don't want to keep our books closed. We're not a closed organization. I don't want, to, I don't want you looking into those glass mirrors to see what's going on inside the factory. I'm going to open the door, I'm going to invite you in. I'm going to show you what the manual says, I'm going to show you what our policies and procedures are, and in doing so, did you enjoy it? Did you have fun? Absolutely. That's what I always hear. I get to hear one negative comment on someone who has been to the Community Police Academy. It's a small commitment, it's eight weeks. However, what you gain, worst case scenario, is an education on what we do. So I'm going to put you to a six-month academy, but I'm just going to give you enough so that you know what goes on in our world, what goes on in our organization, and why our cops do what they do. Okay? With all that said, I think the gentleman over here had the first question. We'll go into question and answer. Sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Martin. Uh, first off, thank you for all that you do. And I think this is really what community police is all about, right? Having a community here, back and forth, right? Yes. Before I get into what I want to just quickly say, I want to thank Fern for her thousands of hours of <laughs>
disclosed before that this individual is coming, knocking on doors, has been maybe speeding off the porches or whatever, and we see that person in our neighborhood, we post something to the uh, local LED Facebook page. Who gets that information? How fast do they do it? Are they monitoring it 12 hours a day? Who does it get past and how do they react? Well, us as well as here, we work 10 hour shifts, so we work four days a week. <laughs> but you read the Facebook page? Yes. You get the direct comment from Facebook. We do We do get direct comments, however, we don't monitor it 24 7. I said, no. If we get the message, we, if we're on, it's on the clock, we would reply to that. However, we educate people to call 1 877 and ask how they can leave. That's when you see something, say something. Uh, that's a great way of uh, alerting the community. They put it forward what's going on in that group itself. So there could be look, uh, out on look for whoever the individual that is. So why we get that call? And, and I apologize, I'm not trying to be argumentative, but it's impossible for us to communicate by phone a video, a picture, etc. that we can do otherwise when we communicate to you by Facebook, link to a picture, a video, etc. So we're, this is about communication, you're right. And we shouldn't dumb down the communication through other layers or time frames that don't work. When we have the ability to immediately give everything that they need to make the decision to act or not. And to the rest of the community, so we are all on the same page. So, you know, it is an issue. It is, as I talk about, an emerging technology here with a lot of pitfalls and a lot of uh, uh, changes and adapts. So we're going to have to make as this emerging technology evolves. Obviously, when I was here as a captain, this wasn't an issue. We had Facebook and Twitter and Nixon. And those were the three pieces of communication that we did. Obviously, somebody, I think if I have been had this great idea, it came up, and here we are today. So obviously, there are some changes that we have to do as an organization, as I talked about, because we're not always going to get it right. But there's some changes that we're going to have to make along the way. Now, as far as the, uh, yeah, they're not on 24-7. The four days a week, then our days, we have the Topeka Facebook page. That was monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week, by the watch commander and the person that we have that sits in that console on the inside. Not as timely, not as expedient, not as fast as you guys have gotten accustomed and used to in the Prime Busters page. But for right now, until we figure things out, until we get down to the bottom of the issues that we have, and I get a comfort level that we're not going to get all this activity back up again, and that we all together have an opportunity to regulate ourselves and to police ourselves to make sure that it doesn't take away from what it was meant to be. A forum where we get to dialogue, we get to talk, and we get to inform us, the, the police department, the volunteers, you, of what's going on in our community. <coughs> together. So, so, for communication with the department, it's a 24 7. I went back to the site, so the station is managed <coughs> for Obviously, if it's an emergency situation, 911, right? As Duke said, the Ask County PD. But that connection with the slow, that's for like an ongoing, you want to give them some information, some heads up. They can come and talk to you next time. So they'll get back to that on a short order. When they're on vacation, they have a substitute monitoring. But I put this back up, you have the, the Tamanga, the, um, the, the uh, front desk, the uh, Gary <coughs> Um, there's also voicemail, which watch commanders are required to have that checked daily. So there are many uh, avenues to reach out to us, but going directly to the slows for the ongoing issues, they'll get back to you, and, that, and then you're getting it straight from them. No intermediate approach. So you're saying we should on occasion send them information? When it's communicated as much as necessary as you need to the slows for your ongoing issues, but you need immediate response, 911 or call the station. Thank you. Hold on, I've got a question over here for this young man, and then I want to go to the back of the room. Yes, sir. Chief, thank you very much. My name is Old Mud. I'm a member of the American Civil Liberties Union. Uh, we have a long history of holding government accountable to oppressed people. My question for you is this. First, and coming, you mentioned in your initial remarks that you wanted to limit the conversation to communications. And I appreciate that. Then you proceeded to list several part one crimes we wouldn't discuss. I believe it was burglary. Uh, robbery, we're not going to talk about carjacking or gangs. In the midst of those part one crimes, you interjected homelessness. And that's precisely the issue that we have with the Los Angeles Police Department. Hold oh. on, oh. 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 we talked about the narrative. Controlling the narrative 
that homelessness is somehow intermingled with the part one crime. I appreciate your comments that you've restricted uh, government employees from participating in private parties, Facebook, hate groups, as we call them. But what we do issue it is you yourself, Chief, uh, with all due respect, um, we're working very hard to change that narrative that homelessness, burglary, gangs, crimes, drugs, that is not all one thing. Just because you're pulling your house is like you said, we have a question, not a commentary. Oh, no, fine. It's not a crime to be homeless and poor. Okay, so we're, I'm asking you, I'm asking you to consider the case, help me to change the narrative and not consider homelessness a part of the crime. Okay. And the reason why I mentioned homelessness in the topic in the part one crime is because I know that the issue of homelessness is a concern part of the reason why we're here. Yeah. So I yeah. wanted to make sure that I told everybody in the room that I was not here to debate that human crisis that we're dealing with. Not because I'm not because I'm not because I'm, I'm correlating homelessness to crime or any of that. We as an organization understand the calamity that we face as a nation, as a city, as a state, as a city, and as a local at the local level. So I want to make make sure that you clearly understand that it's nothing to do with one another. I just want to make sure that it doesn't open up and becomes part of the general conversation here. Now, in the near future. We will have a forum on homelessness where we will bring city partners to discuss what's going on with homelessness. Help, not help, laws, no laws, whatever it is, strictly on homelessness. That's not here today. It's in the communication, that was my point. I think you took my point well. Um, that that's a separate issue. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I had a question. Get up. Uh, right uh, 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 no, Like you 
brought up, right? They will usually come and say, hey, come on, guys, you know, calm down. This is not productive. Um, they are usually the one that calms it down and stops it and says, hey, you need to back off. You need to stop this narrative. And having them on actually helps us keep the day. Those are part of the uh, continued discussions that I'm going to have with them. Okay. Uh, young lady in the back, you? Oh, yeah, hi, I'm Susan Collins, and I also want to just take two seconds to also thank Barn. She has been such a I know immediately because we didn't know it was true, we immediately went to her page yeah. yep. and waited until. And then once Fern commented, it was a huge comfort. I mean, I was comforted, my friends were comforted, my family to know that we had a place that we could get accurate information. And, and everybody in this community refers to that page. And having the slows on there too was just an added benefit. And at a time when the communities are so divided, and there has been some negative you know, information about the police. There has been negative information. To have the police being able to interact with the community on that level was nothing, there was nothing but positives that came out of that. You know, and, and sort of what you hit on too is when you said, you know, you have to investigate these shootings, and you know, there's people do make nut job comments. And for every hundred that you investigate, maybe one <coughs> turns out to be <coughs> a real threat. Excuse <coughs> me, wouldn't you? like a platform where you can see these people, mm -hmm. like if they're gonna come out and say, oh, we should go, all go shoot them. I mean, that's, she's very good. The minute she sees about yeah. that, she addresses it. But with the slows on there, they address it too. You should know about those people. I have people. respect for your time and everybody else's time. If you have a question, please. My question was about, sort of to her question is, that if you have a platform where you can see where the nut jobs are coming out, and the nut jobs are saying, well, let's go shoot up. Wouldn't you want access to that platform so you can know who those people are? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you need to talk to the I didn't want to back and then I want to edge my way. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, my question to you is what are we doing, uh, or what are you able to do um, to address media publications? and or private bloggers who are doxing information and creating false narratives. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which was, which was a, the majority part of what yeah. dealt to all of this coming forward yeah. and this happened. Yeah. government agency, I cannot censor First Amendment. Correct. That's, there's nothing I can do. There's again, a little thing of freedom of speech. As long as you don't say something that is construed as opposite of protection by the First Amendment, then I can, I can take action. If someone here was to yell fire now, that would be a violation of the First Amendment. That's it. Outside of that, as a young man here would know from the ACLU, we have that right that freedom that we happen to enjoy in this great nation. I mean, Doesn't happen to the nation that I came from. I you speak out like that, you go to jail, you, you never find yourself. So to answer your question, it, it is a calamity that we have to do, or not a calamity, because it could be a good, it could be a bad. It all depends on how you feel about it. You know? That is the news media's right and prerogative to inform and to, to post their opinions and to say all those things that are protected by the First Amendment. So as an organization, there's nothing that we are going to do or there's nothing that we, are, we can do. However, yes, there's something we can do. And there's something that we don't believe in that is not in line with our core values or with our mission vision then we'll disassociate from that organization, or from that group, or from that person. Because at the end of the day, we have a duty and a responsibility to protect this great organization that we have. If I, and, if I might say, yes, just sir. directed towards you and the men and women up here, specifically individuals like senior lead officers, Duke Dow, Sean Finzi, and... <laughs> 
Ralph Goggins from the West Valley Division. What a hack job was done. Yeah. 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 These guys have done nothing but dedicate themselves <laughs> day in and day out and above and beyond and have taken their time and to address those who are against so, them. So again, folks, I ask, I've read all your letters. I may not have answered them all, so I, I get all the points. I understand your love and support for the senior leads. Let's keep you the questions. I have a lot of hands. Gentlemen, I will choose your name. Sure. Uh, Question, I'm please. The tag area, and, and basically, I don't concern myself to be right or left. I understand that it's a crisis we're dealing with, with fine homelessness and everything. And, and the community, what, what I noticed with this uh, group, there's a whole range of voices in it, which is a community. <coughs> Sounded like because uh, some publications painted it as a hate group, wrongly. Uh, you have to take action, which I appreciate, and respect, and, and, and stop the bleeding, take a step back. Is this a final decision? Because I, got, I have concerns also with the, with the city-run Facebook mm -hmm. accounts for social media, where you already have the community mobilized. When I first moved here and I saw it, uh, it to me, it, it, it seems like a, a model of what every community right. has. Yeah, and a quick contact to let people know what was going on and, and, and I've seen him personally suppress hate speech more often than well every time he heard it. So I mean if, is this a permanent decision or are you evaluating? Because I would you know advise maybe to re look at it with some parameters for policing the hate speech. So to answer your question specifically one of the persons that I've been with today that was that first the, the exact same question that they asked, and my answer to them is, no, it's not a permanent decision. I leave the door open to everything. Wait, just ask a little bit ago, I need volunteers, I need you, I need your input, I need you here. This is an emerging technology. This is a time to reset, this is a time to evaluate. What controls do I need to put in place? Do you as an argument, as a community need to put in place to ensure that we keep moving forward in a positive, with positive energy to get the job done correctly? So. I can't tell you it's going to be up and running, or we're going to have the souls back up tomorrow, or in a week, or in a month, or in a year. I don't know. We may never come back, but the door is never closed. No decision that I make is a stone, it's a concrete. I'm always willing to listen, change my mind. But you've got to give me some facts on some of the things and the reason why you're asking me to change my mind. You guys all make great points. I've heard it. I read it. I read all your, all your emails, believe it or not. I didn't mention but I read them. So I know exactly how you feel, and I think I said that in the beginning. I'm going to come back to the show later because I've seen that hand back there for quite some time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, question, please. Huh? Question. Yes. Um, well, you just asked um, why they should come back or what the purpose is. Well, it's a central point where, let's say somebody does post, oh, I saw this guy on my ring camera and he climbed over my fence, this and that. When it's on that page, other people can chime in, oh, he was at X location, I just saw him over here, I just saw Yep. And then the slows have one place to go, or everyone has one place to go, where all that information is central versus I gotta add now seven slows, you know, like, you know, Officer Dow, he's not my slow, you know, why am I gonna add him or whoever, you know? So uh, it's a central place where it's a hub for information. And actually, one of the burglaries uh, was my neighbor across the street's house, who I identified because I saw him walking down the street and worked with. Um, I think it was like North Hollywood, because then he had gone over there and burglarized the house. And it was through that that he was recognized. A, a second point is, um, I know that some of the officers have gotten in trouble for posting things like arrest records, and criminal histories, whatever. You know what? That's public record. If you don't want your name out there because you uh, robbed a the house, then don't rob a or, or, or rob a <laughs>
They're not on, they're not on there long. They just get screenshot right away. We ask everyone to report a comment if they see it. We post nonstop. Don't post a visual any comments. If you see one, or if someone um, sends one to either I or Fern or one of the other admins, Brent Rowe, and we'll message them and say, hey, you can't be saying that. And it really means it's like having the slows on the page to, to help alleviate any concerns you have in the neighborhood and everything sharing. What would we need to do to get the slows back That's on the page? Facebook posts that I, I haven't seen if they're all new. Um, 
have, were you able to have a meeting with those people? Because you unprotected us yes. for the one or two. Yeah. What are we going to do? Which means they're impaired, right? 
and you win likes alone. I think the greatest thing and the best communicator of texts, and the proof is everybody who's texting here right now, people do that versus sitting down. There's a lot of lounge lizards, as they say, you know, sitting at the computer, it doesn't really are. Question? The text, the constant chase of the question, many the police department should have a 911 or a non emergency text system because well, someone will send it. You know that they don't, not for not for very Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, I have to agree with the gentleman. I hate social media. My kids drive me crazy when I ask them to do something. I'm, I'm the old school call. You know, my, oh, I'll tell my kids, you get a hold of so and so. Five minutes later, what did he say? Oh, I think so. He dressed me up a banana tree. Call him. You know, it's. It, I, I, you know. But, but calling you so long. No, I get it. Calling, texting, or email. You know, and even then, sometimes. I know some of you guys will text me or email me, and I know some of you have, and I don't get back to you right away, and I know sometimes you guys are probably thinking, he's got nothing better to do, why hasn't he answered my text back here? You know, we're busy. Misinterpretation of those texts and those emails. Send someone an email that counts with an exclamation point. What is that? How is that understood? It's bad. You know, so, so yeah, you're right. I think sometimes this is a great forum. It works for, for this community as far as communicating and being alert and, and work for the, the crime piece. However, when it comes to socially, I, I think we fall short. And I think that's what I'm hoping to get some of the, the, the stop gaps and some of the changes that we need to make in order to perhaps, perhaps come back up online again. So, we have a question? Question. 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 I'm Deborah Demari, and I moved here just to put some background. I moved from West Los Angeles. And people from West LA are so surprised that this community has such great communication with the police department. And I showed them the page, and they would like to implement something like that in Question. And we need to communicate easily, quickly. So we're going to continue to use this white page. But without our slogans, we feel kind of uh, scared and lost. And people may overreact. What do we do? We want them back on. You told me you need to feel comfortable. We can't control individuals from posting ridiculous comments. But it's not the majority. We're law-abiding. We're respectful. <coughs> And we need to get them back on so we feel safe. And that's why we are here. And that's why we are here. So, what do you do? How can we twist your arm? I think I've kind of answered that question already. So, what can you do to get the slows back on the page? I think we've answered that. Okay, everyone, go with back. Let me hit this side of the room first. Sir, I need mean, the patient's Very simple question. When did she get her job back? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Volunteer. That's the first question. So I gotta tell you, Ms. Fern and I met today, and her and I had a discussion, and there's some sidebar issues that I gotta work on that are separate from all of this here. And that is a conversation between Ms. Fern and I, and unfortunately I can't share that with you. So understood. But when first off. Real quick, I appreciate your answer and, and I understand that, okay? But I, I, I gather you know very strongly about it. The other thing is, I'm sorry that your police department has had to deal with things that really are not your fault and shouldn't actually be your responsibility. When an officer has to go through a sanitation environment to go home so that his family is safe, there's something wrong, okay? And as far as the ACLU, I hope you find out the address for Beverly Hills and Culver City. But you guys are in a very, very good situation. We know that, and we also know that we're in a very difficult situation where we have people defecating, doing things, we see things, burying their bodies to our children, and we, we feel very, very frustrated. We don't get the response sometimes that we need. That age was actually a place where people felt there was a reason to go and somebody would respond. 
I know in two situations where I've had your police department not act on a stolen plate on a trailer parked without a vehicle for months, left somebody barricaded in a, in a western a condo complex, and looked at the property owners and said, he's your problem. Fire department took care of it, but LAPD didn't. So there's a point where I looked at this division, and I looked at Sean, and I looked at the other SLOs that helped, and you know what? It was a real great thing. And we were proud to have those people working with us and folks. So just to get that statement out, one question, and the other thing is my great apologies. This is not what you do in the police department to be involved in. Dogs in the tree, or the cats in the tree, what do they call? Hey, hey, they call the police. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens, we are the panacea. We are the cure-offs. We're the most visible uh, form of government. So, I know we had a question over here, Yes. Um, first of all, thank you for holding this meeting and explaining your thought process. My question is this. You said that, you know, you have to take these threats of vigilantism seriously, and I understand that. I don't think anyone in the community wants criminal vigilantism. If there is that happening on the page, wouldn't we want these officers to post that? You know, wouldn't we want them? You're telling us police ourselves to work to that. But if there's vigilantism still in the lines, don't we want the police close to that? So they can identify early and investigate those individuals? So, mm -hmm. Yes, and unfortunately, we cannot tell that the real spot at the end. I'm going to ask a question. So if there is, you know, vigilante or criminal activity taking place in the page, why wouldn't you want LAPD close to that? Why would you withdraw LAPD? from a situation where maybe they could see early or identify if something did happen, if there was a vigilant crime. Okay, are you, are you talking about specifically why would we not let them on the page? Yes, yeah, no, I would have said the thought process of withdrawing them if you think there's danger. Right, the round Whoa, 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 whoa. Everyone except for her. Okay. We identify a person from the Facebook post who made that threat. So the answer to that is no. And I think everyone here knows why that is, so I'm not going to go into that. Because we don't necessarily know who registered on the website or on the Facebook page originally, so we cannot necessarily source it back unless we do a criminal investigation. If it is a situation that does not rise to a crime, we do not have the legal authority to go back to find out who owns that tweet. But if it did rise to a crime, if there was a rap, oh, well, okay. so wouldn't you want so, yeah. to be able to go, hey, someone posted about sure. that? So, so let me, let's, let's, let's bifurcate this. Okay. So there are things that can be posted that don't rise to the level of a criminal investigation. But yet, they could be something that this department cannot associate with. So, boom, right there, we cannot be involved in being on the same page as someone being so posting. That's a PR issue. No, that's not a PR issue. If someone's posting something that reflects negatively on the Los Angeles Police Department, right. it's not PR. We can't be associated with right. that, period. 100%. Okay. So, so I cannot allow one of these city lead officers or anyone else to be associated with that commentary. Okay? So that's number one. If it rises to a criminal investigation, we will happily conduct a criminal investigation where we will use techniques to determine who is behind the screen name, who is behind the posting, and we will conduct a criminal investigation to the best of our ability, file the case hopefully, and then prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. Is that kind of explains But but uh, I do want to address one thing though. So the main issue here is we cannot be, as a department, associated with even those commentaries that don't rise to the level of a criminal investigation for the simple fact that we are the Los Angeles Police Department. So unfortunately, when those things get through either an admin or they're not taken down, um, we, by association, by, well, no, it's, it's okay, man. By association, we are basically on the same page. And if we don't come out to every one of those comments and say... It's as if you can it. Thank you. Okay. So, so throughout the United States, there are officers that are associated with different pages, and I'm sure everyone here has seen it, that are losing their jobs. It is reflecting negatively on the departments, the government agencies, and the... <coughs> 
the people that, you know, we, we work for you. So it's reflecting negatively on us because of some of the things that are being put there. Now, I would be happy to work with the ad hoc community given the limited technology, technological knowledge that I have and discuss some safeguards that I would love to see implemented. But I do want to bring one thing up, though. Look at the turnout for this issue. And at 5 o'clock. And if I'm caught, I know some, 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 some games, some practices, some some kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. So 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 let me say this, okay? And I'm gonna give a plug here. Okay? If you were a reserve or volunteer, we could be having this discussion and coming up with solutions together for this community in an office back here, in a meeting, and moving forward. Okay? That can be happening right now. Look at the dedication and the commitment that everyone has by being here right now. Harness that. Be a volunteer. Be a reserve. Come here and join us. And you know what? Maybe when you come here and volunteer, maybe you'll be the one being one of the administrators on a similar page. I don't know. But if, well, okay, I'm not going to commit to whether it's going to be Burns page or someone else's page. But I am going to commit to this. If you're here and you're volunteering, you're in the game. So guess who has a say? The community. That's why we need you here. Okay? That's why we need you to volunteer. So, so that's it. That's my answer. If you already asked the question, and also you think about another one, I need to give everybody else an opportunity. So I have this opportunity for them. I'm going to go to this gentleman, the green shirt first, and then I've got a gentleman over there waiting after, and then I'm going to come back to you. Either way, so I'm going to go you, you, or you, or you, you, and you. Either way. Ladies first. Thank you. Civility. My question to you, you brought up a couple of times tonight, you're not a fan of Facebook or social media. You've also brought up that early, very early in the meetings that you thought there were two crime busters page. There was a one crime busters page. So I'm just wondering, when you received this information about the people posting these vigilante comments, did they come directly from the page or was it from someone that sent it to you? <coughs> they came, it was a combination of both. I've got emails with screenshots, which goes back to a comment that was said over here. I don't know when those happened. I, I don't have that ability to know when those happened. And I've got posts that I saw myself from the page when we were allowed once upon a time before our folks got kicked out. Our downtown social media unit, they monitor a lot of the stuff. And, and I don't know how they do it, but those kids can do a tremendous job. We got a tool back there. And, you know, at times, those things come up to my attention. I can't be everywhere at all times seeing everything. So I have to depend on our folks, our senior leads, our, our, even our station folks that kind of interact and, and uh, monitor, or not monitor, but participate in these sites as, as part of it. And don't get me wrong. I, I said I don't like it personally because I don't understand it. Because I, I don't master it. I, I don't know. But I, I understand the value that it has. And I support it because I understand that in today's time, it's a way of communication. I don't like it because I like the face-to-face -face interaction. I want to see your body language. Remember, body language is about 80% of the way we communicate and verbal is only 20. And when we go to that medium and we go to that catch, or the, we lose all of that. And so I can't understand, you know, how are you feeling? Are you happy? Are you not? Are you, are you excited? Are you not? when we're doing it without that fishing. So that's just me, my personal opinion. But I do value it, I understand it, and I support it. I can say, I've been on my crime bus for just about every day for the past couple of years. And I have never seen anybody, I've seen people get mad at each other and have their own little arguments on there. I've never seen anyone post anything about vigilante. Or else they got it down really quickly. Yeah. But what I, what I, what I want to say is that the vast majority, I mean, I would say like 98%, are people giving positive comments about things that are happening in their neighborhood and making you aware of things that you wouldn't know about otherwise? We don't have like a local <coughs> TV channel that just covers like our neighborhood. This is the way we communicate <coughs> today. And whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Pinterest or whatever, it is, that's how we're communicating. And it's a vital, it really is a vital piece of communication for us today. And I understand that, and because I support it, I'm going to close the door to it and say, this is done, this is the last of the conversation, I don't have to make you happy. There's some that are going to understand, there's some that are not, but I'm not doing that, because I understand that. So I'm going to go open to the possibilities that we can fix it or move forward and in a more positive way, 
Why does it put me, does it put us as an organization <coughs> in, in that light? And that's where it comes down to. So now I'm going to go to the young man over there. There's the wall. I'll get that. <laughs> um, so first I want to address who was concerned about Facebook not being a good source of digital change. Whenever you make a change, there's an edit notification at the bottom of the book. You click on that, <coughs> it'll show you the entire history of the edits, when yeah. they occur. It's a lot easier on Facebook than in Twitter to identify a bad app. So it's a lot better than that as far as you can track it. On Twitter, you don't need to do Twitter. Um, now, what I like to do uh, Los Angeles is a big city. Um, it's a good city with a very large population. There's only one other city in the country that's remotely close to it, and that's New York City. Um, the officers earn 10,000 in the population. You know exactly where the is. It hovers in Los Angeles around 22 to 25 to 10,000. New York City has almost doubled that, around 42 to 45 officers for 10,000. They have beat cops. We can't have beat cops with our current level of trust. The closest thing we have are the communities that we form. This gets us face to face with our, our slows at about as good as you can get in the current environment with the number of police officers we have. As actually walking down the street and seeing the police officer walking up to your pocket. I think that is an incredibly good and powerful thing for the community. Um, this is something, yeah, there's a question about it. But yeah, in order to understand the question, you have to understand the background. My, my apologies for that. Uh, so the question, uh, the question is, this needs to be something that you can both consider when you're determining if the lens slows back in or not. Will you consider that? And before you answer that, I have one other thing I'd like to add. My, my good friend and diametrically, ideologically opposed friend, Paul Mann uh, commented that our group was a hate group. As somebody associated with the ACLU, I would hope that he wouldn't be using such ideologically powerful terms to shut down the conversation by people who disagree with That would be heavy. I would hope he would take that back and apologize for it because. You're, you're talking about, you've seen the posts on Facebook, you've seen 10, 15 users out of close to 1,200, 1,100? Oh, thousands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thousands. Yeah. thousands. 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 Yeah, 12,000. Well, but you're, you're talking less than a fraction of 1% of what's represented by that group, and we're a hate group. That is astounding to come from somebody wearing an ACLU mushroom. Yay! Yay. Will he <laughs> the question was, will he apologize? <laughs> we know them because of the page. We know them, their faces. We know where they were. We wouldn't know them. Right. So I think I've already kind of... I feel compelled to respond. No, no. <laughs>
I'm a, I have lots for no reason. I'm very, very lucky to be involved with no reason. 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 No it's up to firm. If LAPD is supporting this page, I think they should also make sure that the people who run the page are doing so in a fair manner. We support communication. We want to make sure that everybody has an equal right to share in what's going on in our community. As this young lady here stated, when it was gone, she felt afraid. I want everyone to share in the communication. I understand that it's a private page. Okay? That's the reason why we're not in there either. It's hard to regulate if it's not private. Well, that's, that is a challenge. I can't say it's impossible. But that's where the community in general, you know, if there's something that's inappropriate, why do we feel the need to respond and engage? How many people do you guys think that I come in contact with that they don't necessarily agree with my views as an officer, as a person? And, and they, I've been spat on, I've been called all the names you can imagine, and I don't engage because as a professional, I have to be able to take a step back and understand that that's where it is. As much as it burns me, and as much as I want to act, I can't. And that's the problem, and that's what we need to understand here, is that, you know, we're going to disagree. All of you guys, I'm sure if I have a conversation with you guys and we get down into the weeds, we're going to disagree on a lot of stuff. But that's okay. We do it in a private setting, just me and you, then we'll shake hands at the end of the conversation. But what happens in this type of setting, and then all of a sudden everybody comes in, now I don't know what your issue is, why you got blocked out, somebody does, they may, I don't know. But these are the type of things that are going to detract from what the true reason is while we're here. And that is to get together, right, do it in a civil manner, do it in an organized manner, informative manner, that doesn't detract. Whatever those issues are, I don't know. This young man said here he was blocked also. I don't know you, sir. I don't know what the issues are. But those are things that the ad hoc committee, as you guys want us back in that page, can take a look at. And if the technologist, like this young gentleman here said, we may be able to go back to the page and take a look at, at his and his or whomever else has been kicked out to find out the reasons why. Because listen. I don't discipline any officers without telling them, sitting down face to face and tell them what they did wrong. They may not agree with it, they may not agree with my decision, but at least we have that civility where I sit with them and I tell them what they did wrong. And I think if anyone has been kicked off the page or if anyone has been locked out or whatever, we owe them that. I should not have, my thing has always been, is that no officer will look at me in the face and wonder what happened to them. Because I'm going to tell them. And that's the same thing that I expect. We sort of happen to be members of the West Coast, elected members of the West Coast Labor Council. And you are elected by all the Let me go to this gentleman right behind you because he had a question, then I'm going to come back to this room. Yeah, and I, I saw the other come back. I have a comment. With, no, no comments, please. With a question, yeah. please. With a question, please. okay. All right, so um, I'm also a local neighborhood council, also work for uh, County DMH. And um, I have worked with the slows trying to find ways of, to solve the homelessness solution here. And, I, and, and that was going on for quite a while. And then because of these pages, I think it's become more divisive. I think that this Facebook page you see here tonight, like you can't even have a different point of view where you get shouted down. And this happens to be in a, like an LAPD police station that has all the different people that, that have been called out from that page. So I think it, I feel like it's a little bit of like uh, kind of a biased situation here to begin with, so, first of all. No, again. come on. Before I forget, hold on. I posted this public meeting in our public site. People still say it's coming. Hold on a second. Okay. I posted this public meeting. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The entire community, right? Not just this, this posting. And, and I'm really closely tied to what's going on in this community. I feel like okay. I have my pulse on this community. The people do not feel safe coming into this uh, arena to discuss their point of view because of the mobbing 
and the bullying that's happening in this community. Based on these things, exactly. Folks, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This young man here is talking, he's got a point to make. Agree or disagree with it, I think you're on that respect to let him talk. Okay? So please, now we'll be here to midnight. We'll find dinner. Okay, so please, please, respect this time. He's been patiently waiting. Let him speak. So, Go yeah, but he's been a different point of view at all. And, it, and I think the biggest issue here is homelessness, because that's what I'm an advocate of. I work in, in mental health as a second social worker. And so we don't get a, cho a, we don't get a choice to call this one a bad homeless and this one a good homeless. We try to help everybody. And the people with the most problems, actually, when we get them housed, they save more money for the taxpayers. So information like that doesn't go yeah. through. See? And this is because of the narrative, in my opinion, because of sir, this is not the question. Let this gentleman go on. 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 Let this not homelessness and helping people and all that. That will be a separate forum, that will be a separate city, where perhaps you're going to be on the panel and you'll be able to, to uh, share with the, the rest of the community and hold on to what it is that is going on, what it is that's being done. Not tonight. That's not what we're here to do tonight. So if you've got a, if you've got a question on... on yeah, how, do you assure, how do you assure that that, that we have a civilian running these pages with, with activity of uh, and volunteer activity or, or paid activity of LAPD. How do you assure that that um, oh, 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 people won't be? Oh, that's nice. That's a nice story. Yeah. yeah. Let me correct one thing you just said right now. Yeah. There's no one. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There's no one, paid or otherwise, from the Los Angeles Police Department that has any involvement in running this web page. Period. Do you understand? Did you hear me? I did. Okay, go ahead. I used to have a working relationship with the senior officers in my area. I don't anymore because of that page. Because of the way it's presented. And I was cut off that page because you didn't like my point of view. So my question is, how do you assure going forward, because I've heard you say there would be no more involvement, now I'm hearing that there would be involvement, so I'm confused. First of all, you can, you can explain that. If, if there is going to be, and then a second, second question is, how do you assure that, that, that the administration is going to be a fair, a different point of view than the majority of people in the next page? How do you assure that we're not going to get knocked off that page? Okay. So, first question, first question. I said that I made the decision to pull them off the page until, first of all, I came and met with you guys, number one. Number two, I conducted an investigation as to everything that was being said. And number three, that there is a possibility that we as an organization may engage back. I also said, not promising you tomorrow, not promising you next week, not promising you next week, not promising you next year. I'll be willing to put together an ad hoc committee to look at it. You're welcome to it. I You're welcome here. to it. Anybody who has ideas is welcome to it. Okay? That's what I said. So I want to make sure that I'm misunderstood or, or misquoted. Put on the record, I volunteer right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I do. We all do. Uh, real, real quick, folks, before we move forward, so that we can kind of go through the questions and all the questions heard. So if, if the point is that you feel like you're being disenfranchised, you have no way of communication, please, if you do not get one of these, understand that these contact numbers are for every single one of you in this room and for your friends and family members within the community that we serve. Does everybody understand that? Yes. yes. Take the numbers down from up here, and we'll make sure you have one of these. With absolute certainty, every single individual in this room has a connection to their police department. So let's, let's go away from that narrative and go into the uh, you know, discourse. This gentleman in the black shirt has been with his hand up, way from the beginning, patiently waiting. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, if you could help me. Wrap this up in 20 seconds. I'm going to restate what you said and tell me if I've gone wrong. There's a publicly or privately available group to those who can join it where they can communicate about crimes in the city. And there's also officers, senior lead officers, that are available for shifts of 10 hours throughout the week that can be reached through that page. 
No, no, hold on. Before this incident. And because of whatever happened, people being disenfranchised, people putting out fake stories, people putting out true stories, whatever happened, for liability's sake, you got to pull the plug. Like in the securities industry, I can't email a client unless it goes through my broker-dealer. They have to be in control of all communications. So now, at the present time, there's a group that you can join to report crimes, and you have senior lead officers available four shifts of 10 hours a week. Right? Yes. So we're in the same place. We can go to this group, we can share videos, whatever we want to do, tell on our neighbor, and we have a way to reach out to the senior lead officers to tell them about whatever we need to tell them. Is that correct? Correct. All right. That's, I, I just, that's what I thought I heard you say in the beginning, and I'm, I'm missing where we're not coming together. Okay. I'm the blue shirt. Okay, thank you. I've got a couple questions that I commented between. Um, are you aware that the people that wrote the initial blog and the person that wrote uh, one of the articles, the initial article that was then picked up by other media, that they do not live in our area, that they are, have, I believe, an interior motive if you look at their backgrounds? So I don't know a lot of the information that was given there. That is part of the reason why I need to conduct that investigation to find out I would look at the, the who, the what, the where, the why. Well, when, when I found out that the police officers were kicked off, I was upset. And I spent four hours, four and a half hours, tracking down the articles, tracking down who wrote them, and their background. And it's an interesting story. Also, I believe there are trolls on the website, yeah. too, who feed information back yeah. and actually sometimes instigate yeah. stuff yeah. to get people yeah. involved. Yeah. So, as you make the decision, that's, that's a really important thing. The other thing, I, I, one point I want to make, and then a, just a couple quick comments, I'll go fast, um, is that um, this is a very powerful website, Crime Busters. It's got over 11,000 members, and it doesn't count our spouses or friends and other people that communicate. So there's more than 11,000 people that are following this station. And maybe it's a small percentage of the valley, but it's a lot of people. And I missed it. The, the week the police officers were taken off, we had the Topanga Mall incident. And then we also had an incident with a person from a trailer, I believe, that was on uh, Wood Lake, or yeah, I think Wood Lake, that was in the neighborhood near a church a park, and the school that my grandkids were in. I was desperate for information, went automatically to Crime Busters to see if anything was there. I think if the police had been on, there would have been something up quickly. But, you know, my, my kids had to go get their kids out of that school, and it was scary. And with today's information coming fast, we want fast information. I'm not going to get it from your Facebook page. And until the police can dedicate communication officers with, with other means of communication other than trying to call. Now, I've used my SLO, I've called, I've emailed them on occasion when there's been local issues. But this site is very powerful, and it would be a shame if we don't let our officers uh, be able to community police within a community-developed website. Um, the other thing is just a question for you to think about, is how can you make, kind of this lady said it, how can you make a decision when you don't really understand the medium? And then the other thing is you're really promoting volunteerism, and it sounds like a lot of people want to hear a volunteer, but the fact, we're sitting back here thinking, well, you kicked off one of your good volunteers. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why not be volunteer? Friday night till 2 in the morning. Probably retired. <laughs> You're probably retired. Unfortunately, I don't have that time right there and there. So I have to hit the pause button and I have to look into it. And I have to educate myself on a lot of things that come up in this organization on a daily basis. You know, they do say learning is a lifelong process, but I'm doing it every day. So that's the reason why I made that decision. Secondly, I understand the powerfulness of the, of the site. That's why I left a door open. I proposed an ad hoc committee, which my partner is, is you know, willing, I'm sure they got there, and we're going to have some folks, we're going to have some folks, to look into it and find out and see what happens. I understand the importance of today's piece of communication.
information that this was very powerful. And in the meantime, until I find out, we go back, we recess, collectively we come up with a set of rules, guidelines that's gonna hopefully try to mitigate or prevent that type of language and that type of behavior and that medium, I need to offer you something different. I know it's not the cure-all, but it's a, it's a band-aid in the meantime. Well, we've, we've had it. We got a couple questions on that. We got a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of questions. All right, so well, then you get, you're going to probably be here longer than I. Oh, <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Nice so, guys, wave your hands if you would. I'm, uh, first of all, I'm stepping in here because I understand this meeting was happening tonight. I'm actually scheduled to be here, though not for this meeting, but I'm scheduled to talk to Roll Call. Uh, for, for Watch 3 and Tank. I move around the city as, uh, as we all do for various meetings and uh, stepping in uh, tonight was my scheduled time to come in and see Watch 3. So I'm going to do that. They start at 7.15. Uh, now, there was others that would wish that I, for, for me not to be here. <laughs> because I understand that there's some controversy here. Uh, but I, I think that uh, just as, as uh, Chief Rodriguez steps up to this and says, hey, uh, we own our decisions. We, we make decisions based on the information we have. Um, I, I back that, and I'm here to back him and to back you also. This is a difficult situation, but it's not that difficult. Because what this is about is nothing less than the reputation of the Los Angeles Police Department. And make myself, make, make it be perfectly clear that I have no greater passion than to protect that reputation. And if that means that in the social media front of today, which oftentimes are a little more than echo chambers, that our men and women can't be a part of that as Los Angeles police officers because I don't have time for them to police that site and correct a narrative, then so be it. Now, if sites can operate in a respectful manner, in a manner that has discord, I don't expect it to be a sing-along, <laughs> but in a respectful manner that demonstrates the values of this organization, that we'll be there as we've been there. And so, and, and so just be clear, I have my own Facebook account, my Twitter account, my Instagram account. Uh, I probably put more stuff on there than anybody in their right mind would do. <laughs> but, uh, but as a public figure, nothing goes up there unless unless I put it on there. But what I don't do is respond to every person who comes up on there and wants to say something to me. But I also don't belong to any group in which if I go up on that Twitter account, Facebook account, Instagram account, people are hawks and they're crying for one thing or another that I believe undermines the dignity and undermines the sanctity of individuals. And right now, we don't have an answer on this except to say we will support every bona fide, legitimate social media channel that we can, within reason, with information. But that doesn't mean we have to be a member of it. And there are other means of which to provide information so that your needs are met. But who this group is, it's like tonight. You decide yourselves who attended tonight and the size of the structure, right? And wherever your passions are at, I, I welcome the men and women of this department as they're here tonight to hear you. But for me as a department, as, a ch as the uh, chief of this department, it's important for me to come in here and I'll take a few questions and comments to say to you that we want the safety of each of our communities and that in that safety there are substantial challenges that are greater than any generation before us may have seen and they involve some very basic human rights and dignity and the rights and protections of people for their own safety of their own property, their own ability to walk the streets, their own ability to, to be in a community. And our men and women understand that tenfold. And they're in a, they're in a biz bag at times of trying to come up with how do, I, how do I help this situation. But how this has gotten most recently is a very emotional and contentious and at times filled with hate and, and hurtful and vile remarks that I do not have the temperament to have an officer not respond to 
because others say, why aren't you saying something? And so tonight, I'm here to say I am going to speak up, and I'm proud of the men and women who have spoken up in the department to say, no, we've got to stop this right now until we can get a better control of the conduct of this. And with that, let me take uh, a, couple, a, couple, a couple remarks. Uh, so here, here, I have no idea uh, which arm's been up longer. Okay? And I've got about seven minutes. Raise your hand here, and then I'll get you next. Clear our hands. This is, this is a meeting about crimes that are committed by the shelter community or just crimes committed in the community. This is a meeting. Hold on. This is a, let me be clear. Let me, you get one question, okay? This is a meeting, in my view, this is a meeting about the way the department communicates and what communication forms we will be on regardless of the subject. Because, believe me, unsheltered, sheltered, that's one aspect of Los Angeles in this great city. And I'm proud of this city on the hill. But there are many contentious issues that have opposing factions and, and communication mediums in which we will not participate because, frankly, the decorum on that site is, is not suitable for, it doesn't dignify our participation. You had a question back there? Yeah. No, I, I will do this. Right here? Hi, uh, my name is Marcy, and um, I'm part of uh, my father's business, and we advocate to our unsheltered brothers and sisters. I'm a mother, and I am a mother of what most of you guys question. probably disregard, I need, I which is a transient. Okay. okay. And I go on those pages all the time because I try to seek out the livelihoodness of my son that did not choose that lifestyle, but that's the lifestyle he does. And I see these horrible mm -hmm. comments, and I see the put downs and the virates, and they're constant. I'll see his picture, I see other yeah. brothers and yeah. sisters. If I can yeah. question. My question is. I understand the, the lack of now that we do not want to be affiliated, you know. I, I, I understand that. I work for a government agency also. And my question is, if that's not the area, let's say for, for example, myself, what, what is an, an, an appropriate area for me to be able to communicate if I reach out to my school, if I reach out to the Hope team, and I get nothing? But yet when I go on there and, and, and I see that, it, it creates a little tension. Okay. So let me, let me answer that. Um, everybody who calls me, who writes me, who emails me, if I don't get back to them, someone does. I try to, I try to get back as many as I can personally. So internally and externally. I'm not asking you to send an email to me. <laughs> but I do expect that when you reach out to our, to our men, men and women of the organization, that you can get, that you will get a response back within reason. Now I will say there are some people who would like to occupy members of this organization's time from morning to night. And there's questions that they, they what is, they, they ask questions or make assertions that there is no good answer for. At least the, the person they're trying to respond to, it just goes on and on and on. And at some point, our men and women have to be able to get on the major task. But, but in short, this command has social media channels for crime. And I appreciate, and this is because, crime is occurring. I appreciate that this is being addressed because it does matter a lot. Especially for us, it takes a lot for me to stand up here and to tell you guys that my son is probably one of the persons that has created a lot of your headaches. That is difficult for me yeah. to come up here and say that. So but I'm here sure. because I want to make sure. I appreciate what Fern does. I have seen her page and I and I do <coughs> see some of the threats. I have seen him personally against um, the, the folks that we go advocate for. So for those folks that think it's not out me, there, it me, is out there. Let me move on. I got to take two more questions. Uh, here and then here. Yes. Sorry, you asked about I can't hear you. Sorry. Stand up. Stand up. Okay. Well, this, I'm sorry. Did you have time to stand up? Did you have time to ask for people why they don't volunteer? But I do volunteer with the LASD, and we were to look for active shooters. Now, what people have posted on these sites, I'm not on the site. But what I've seen now for LA Magazine and everything else, the they're inciting, they're inciting, I know, Pay Town and everything else, and I've seen the screenshots. That's inciting violence. So if we saw those, if the LASPD saw those, they would be going after them to say, well, they're inciting violence. So what is the difference between people threatening to kill people and rat poisoning and all of these other things that are so, really important? So let me, let me address it. So, so why aren't they being. So today, today, uh, we see uh, the internet filled with uh, thousands of, of millions of, of tweets and messages and posts and so forth. 
one of the largest challenges we have is understanding uh, when their First Amendment right, which is one of the most protected rights in our country, uh, the ability to say vile and disgusting and, and terrible things, but that's a judgment that I'm making, and when does it become criminal? Uh, we investigate every single day uh, people who broach that line, uh, and we pursue that, and we will. And if that means a site that's been discussed or another site. But there is not immunity, but at the same time, this, this democracy protects very, and guards very tightly the ability for you to express the opinion. Uh, and when it is an opinion and when it is a threat is one of the aspects, that is a close aspect that we pay attention to. I'm going to take uh, here, and then the gentleman back here has been a patient at the time. Okay, so I'm sorry, it was you. I'm sorry, it was you. I'm sorry. Thank you. To your consideration, as you look beyond this meeting, a while back, Officer Brown responded to my request on Facebook. I was in Washington State, many miles from home, and for three days in a row, a man kept coming to my door and trying to break in. The third day, he brought a friend. They were so far away from my ring camera, you couldn't quite get it. Contacted Fern, she had she got a hold of Officer Brown, who then called me on the phone and said, "Dial 911." Did that. I immediately uploaded my ring videos up to Officer Brown, and he was after he got the 911 call, he got the dispatch, and then he contacted me later, telling me everything he said. So that is a consideration for you as. How it yeah. is a win-win for me and you guys. However, my my other there's a question in here. There is. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm 46 years old, resident here, so I have voted on many many measures to increase your staff to give you guys the funding to get more police officers. We're having a terrible time getting through the Ask LAPD and 911, which I know you're aware of. So what's happened to it is that we've used it, uh, we've uh, bolstered and, and built and expanded this department, uh, and the demands for service have continued to go up. Uh, we are literally up uh, about 13% in call load in the last in the last four years. That, those are hundreds of thousands of more calls today than we had five six years ago. And you have the communication staff that is that is struggling to work through that. This year we're adding more staff and today I met earlier on a budget proposal for next year that will be adding more staff. We are in a growth industry when it comes to calls for service, people reaching out to us. One of the other things we're going to try to do is try to offload some of those calls because there's also a number of those calls that deal with mental illness. And as such, uh, that's, we've seen an increase in mental illness calls and those are, are really uh, compounding our ability to process public safety calls First uh, instances in which outreach and engagement uh, with, with uh, mental health professionals needs to occur. I need to give this meeting back after this question here. Yes. First of all, thank you for coming to this. Uh, your, your presence here shows exactly how important this meeting is. Thank you, Deputy Rodriguez, Chief Rodriguez. I, it is very much appreciated. Uh, you have to understand that the frustrations of this group stem from the fact that we've been here before. Now, you understand that the Los Angeles Police Department has its detractors, and that you can do no right in their eyes. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, correct? You understand that it is these detractors who <coughs> made a complaint almost more than a year ago in some 80-page document that was sent to the Attorney General in the Los Angeles Police Department that had these very posts. Okay, but you, you had to help me. I've got to go to a road. Yes. So, what we want to know is if that information was already in the Los Angeles Police Department's possession, with printouts of the very posts that turned out into these pre election publications yep. that came out in, uh, to malign the group and to malign everything. Land question. It's been a month. Please. Yes. It's been a month 
why has the LAPD not been able to coincide the publications and that, that the LAPD had this knee-jerk reaction on to pull the slows off of when all of these posts that were in these articles also appeared in a more than year old letter in the LAPD's possession. So, um, so let me answer that question, okay? We're going to, uh, you, can, you can't back this up. Uh, we're going to base information on what we have at the moment. I respect it and honor and, and would be uh, I very, two things happen is my understanding. One of which is we would continue to provide the organizer, the administrator of the site with relevant crime information, A. Secondly, until we could determine and work out what, what actually occurred, LAPD officers were to stand down off there, period. Now, you, can, you may not like either one or both of those decisions, but as I started all in, the protection of the reputation of this department <coughs> is an absolute must for me. And in the face of unsubstantiated, uh, factually wrong, um, uh, uh, slanderous, whatever description you want to have or the group wants to have, I don't, we're not going to stay in that food fight right now. We're going to take a step back, get information to, to, the, to the administrator, and ask these men and women to use other channels to provide information, and we hope, and I hope, that more information can come in people's conduct can be such that we can exchange information, build upon the safety. I live in this community just north of here. I have my ring. That, that's not an authorization. <laughs> <laughs> but I have our endorsement. Uh, and I know that it's going, it goes off. And what, what do we do with that information? And how does that information in the neighborhood and so forth, well, how the police department, how are we handling that? And I'll tell you that we're drinking from a fire hydrant at times with bits and clues of information. And so it's not working. But we are committed to this. I'm encouraged by this room. I'm encouraged by your participation. And I want to be here to, to kind of frankly own the responsibility. The buck doesn't stop with them. It stops with me. So if you do not like what's happened, uh, you, have, you have an explanation of why. It's not meant to be arrogant. It's meant to just say this is the basis for it. And I hope and look forward to our ability to work together in a manner that's more harmonious and that is more demonstrative of what it means to be an Angelina. And, and yet we're in tough times. And I know that it's frustrating, and I'm frustrated as well. And I know 13,000 members of this organization are frustrated by the challenges on our plate. Um, and we didn't create them. And, but yet we're not going to walk away from it. We're going to do everything we can to work for solutions. So with that, uh, I do, I respect George. You know, there are some other issues that you may not be aware of as I'm going to learn today, John Hemmelin, and as I've learned over my time kind of through this organization, I worked the patrol call once upon a time, and I went to radio calls, and there was only two, maybe three sides to every story. So I got to hear them, right? I got to hear them. And then out of fairness for everybody, if you're going everybody else, I'll make those decisions. So there's a sidebar issue that's going on. Fair enough? Secondly, there's some concerns here about you contacting. There was a gentleman here that uh, I think he's gone from yeah. DMH. That the senior leader's not calling him or he's not uh, connecting with them or whatever the case happens to be. If you feel that you're not getting the right police service, that's why you have captains here that are dedicated. That's why you have me here that I'm dedicated. As the chief said, ladies and gentlemen, 32 years in this organization, I'm invested in it. I am the leader of this organization. And you bet that I'm going to protect this organization and send it to its reputation to the hill. Because that's what I know how to do, and that's what I swore to do. So if you're not getting the police service, please get a hold of us. I know a lot of you guys know my, my, my email account. I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> my serial number is 25668 online. If you don't feel you get the service, send me an email. If you have the captains, we will make sure that you get that service that you need. So I don't want you to walk out of here, wherever it is, wherever you work, saying, well, because I'm on this opposing side of the view, you know, I'm being retaliated, the police is not working with me, whatever the case happens to be. We're unbiased when it comes to that. And we work with every single member of the community, whether you have the beliefs of the ACLU or, or the tree right or left or whatever, it doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is the same thing in this community at the end of the day. Okay.
this gentleman here. I'm going last because you already have an opportunity. Thank you so much. Uh, and I also want to make sure that the irony is not lost that we're live streaming on Facebook. Yay! <laughs> 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 our tweets aren't allowed on Facebook, it's just very ironic. Um, <laughs> so thank you, you yeah, yeah, said yeah, not quite accurate. That, yeah, there are a lot on Facebook. Not on our side. Okay. Um, <laughs> you indicated that the mere presence